What's going on guys? Counting Gains back here again. So today we got some more Visit USA. 10 culture shocks foreign tourists have when they visit America. So, like I said before guys, living in Ireland is a lot different. I'll be comparing what it's like to live in Ireland compared to the USA. I've only been in the USA once for one day <laughs> and it was sick guys. You know, North America, like Canada, it was, it was sick man. It was like one of the best places I've ever been in my life. Absolutely. And yeah, it's super unique guys, completely different than anywhere in Europe that I've visited Italy, anything like that. But Ireland is also super unique. So we're gonna do a little comparison. Make sure to hit that subscribe button guys, and let's get it. Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World. Today we're in Springfield, USA. Yes, the home of the Simpsons. Cool. Well, actually not the actual home of the Simpsons. Oh. There's actually about 20 or 30 Springfields throughout the US. This just oh. happens to be Springfield, Illinois. So yeah, well, the joke on the, the Simpsons is that every town in like the US, Every state in the U.S. has a town called Springfield, right? Nearly every town. Because it could be like anywhere in America, right? And today what we have for you are 10 things that are going to shock you about when you come to the U.S. Because there are things that do shock people when they come here. You know, how many flags are flying all around every single city. And, and how many Starbucks and McDonald's are in every single city. And, and the Americans actually eat cheese oh. that's in a can that they spray in their mouth. That what the heck nasty. is that? <laughs> or look! No need to refrigerate. <laughs> what, I'm not even Bro, that is just vile. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's just vile. We talk about the politics of the US, which is also a shocking kind of thing. Today we're gonna focus on our 10 things that shock foreign tourists when they come to the US. So let's get started, okay? All right, so the first thing that's gonna shock you when you come to the US are the sizes of the US. Now when I talk about sizes of the US, I mean the actual size of the US, this country is huge. I mean, it's the size of a continent, okay? When you wanna get around, but also the sizes of the food you get here, the portion sizes, free refills, I'm Oh my god it's soda without end but also the size of the people and that's why i really kind of focus on the size of the u.s is that first kind of shock my thing was like when i was driving in canada and america the freaking roads and the houses everything was just like no kidding probably four times the size of anything in ireland like it was just unbelievable like the roads like the paths like everything was just like why is everything so massive all the food it was just I didn't understand why everything was so huge. Like, I just, I didn't understand that. I don't know, it was just crazy. Because I'll meet tourists that are coming to the US and they're like, oh, I'm gonna fly into New York, just rent a car in New York, drive down to Miami, and then drive over to Las Vegas to do some gambling. That shouldn't take so long. I mean, it's all in the same country. What you need to realize is the US is huge. That drive from New York City to down in Miami is gonna take you 18 hours oh. straight of driving. That means no potty breaks, no getting food, no getting gas, 18 hours straight. Oh, no, of course, no, no construction, no, no traffic jams, nothing like that. I mean, it's literally, you know, 1,300 miles or about 2,000 kilometers just from New York to the tip of Florida. And then if you wanna go from Florida to Las Vegas, well, that's another 4,000 kilometers. And it is huge distance is when you are traveling the US and that does surprise people when they realize is wow this is a lot bigger than traveling around Germany well yeah Germany you can take the train around and see everything here in the US you just really can't do that that is so true I was driving for like seven hours one day and I didn't even I didn't even we didn't even go 100 kilometers which is ridiculous distances are just too big and of course with those sizes I said the portion sizes here one of the things I love to see is when people realize that we have free refills in the US yeah, this guy seems super happy about that, guys. Obesity is rampant in the U.S. Like, it's actually really sad to see, guys. I said, I said it in the last video. It's like super sad, like super sad, guys. Like everyone's like 500 pounds. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. If you're getting soda, not in a can, but a fountain soda, you know, when they pour the soda for you, if you go to a restaurant, most of the time, your Coke, your Pepsi, your Mountain Dew, which has super caffeine stuff, your Dr. Pepper, or root beer, which foreigners tend to hate, but we Americans love, it's... I love root beer. Root beer is the best drink ever. I don't know why we don't have it really here in Ireland. We don't have root beer in Ireland, but it's like the tastiest drink, man. Taste his drink. Free refills, you just get more and more and more. So you only pay once and you get all the soda you ever want. Sadly, that free refill stuff doesn't count for alcohol. Like the portion sizes here, like a large drink here is a small there, right? Legit. It's like an extra small here. Like or there. Like I ordered like a, a medium sized drink and they gave me no shit guys. They gave me like two of those. And I was like, what the hell is this? I looked at your man, I was like, oh, I want like a medium. And he was like, oh, that's, that's a medium. And I was like, Jesus Christ. 
How the hell am I supposed to drink two liters of fucking, you know, whatever? Shit's ridiculous. Oh, dang it. But the thing is, is that free refills, but also the portion sizes here in the U.S. kind of explain some of these things. Because you'll see is when you're going to get your McDonald's or whatever in Germany, you get the large there, okay? The large is a half liter. Well, the large in Europe is just a medium here. Because here you can get literally larges that are like this big. It is insane, the portion sizes. And when you go to the restaurants, sometimes you'll think, man, there's enough on one plate to feed two people. Yes, there probably is. So just know wow. when you're coming to the US, you might pack on a few pounds or kilos or stones, whatever, you know, whatever. Well, I was like 240 pounds going to Canada and I actually lost weight because I was exercising every day because I was eating just the most horrendous, horrible shit. I must be the only guy who has ever gone to North America for a month and actually lost weight coming home. <laughs> so I must be the only guy ever. Like, because I was eating everything, but I was exercising like crazy, trying to pack on muscle as well. It was just, bro, it was unbelievable. Like, it was just so unbelievable. <laughs> Whatever measurement you want to use, because there is a lot of really big portion sizes, but there are a lot of really good food around here in the U.S. No, it's not just McDonald's. We, we go to other places too. What's and then the kidding? third of those size things are the size of the people. Yes, there yeah. are a lot of <clears throat> husky, as I like to call myself. He's a fat ass guy. <laughs> Yo, I'm kind of a dick, but dude, everyone's just fat as shit, guys. It's just, it's so sad. Like, when you go to some places in Europe, you see, like, people that are, like, kind of a little bit husky, as this guy likes to refer to himself. But in America, I mean, there's no other word, guys. It's just, you're fat as hell, guys. It's, these people are just triple size, bro. I don't, I didn't even get it, man. It's unbelievable. Husky, fluffy Americans. Yes, Not we do fluffy. eat a lot, and no, we don't go around a lot. We're driving a lot and things like that, and so you will see a lot of big people here. But the thing is, not every American is a big, fat slob like me, okay? There's all kinds of shapes and sizes of Americans that you are here, so don't just think every American just goes to McDonald's and gets fattened up. That's just me, okay? So just know that there are this... It's most people, guys. There's like 80% of people are overweight or obese. Like, everyone that you see in America that's not under the age of like 25 will be pretty much obese, guys. That's what I saw anyway. It's really sad, actually. The size of the U.S. will shock you when you look at those things, all right? Now, the second thing that's going to shock you when you come here has to do with those people. It is the people. Look, there is this rumor that, oh, Americans are just fake friendly. No, Americans really are super friendly. The friendliest people I've ever met in my entire life, like outrageously friendly, like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it was so, 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 so friendly. No matter where you go, people will try to help you. They'll show you around. They'll say, hey, which restaurants should you go to in this town? What site should we see? Hey, I'm lost. Could you help me find the highway? People are really nice from the US and at different parts. You go to Minnesota, they're insanely friendly. In the South, they're insanely friendly. And that's one thing is people need right. to understand is the US, we do help each other out. We do ask you, hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? How can I help you? These are normal. I would say Irish people are probably more friendly though. Um, just like living here, you know, I think Irish people are probably a little bit more friendly, but ah, it's kind of hard to tell. I actually think Americans are more friendly. Just like that random average person would be like so much more friendly than Ireland. But in Ireland, people would probably help you a lot more, let's say things and that service kind of scares tourists when they come they're like I just walked in the store and they're asking me how can they help I don't even know what your store has yet how can you help me when I don't even know what you have <laughs> look just know that in the US we're all about service we're going to ask you right away what can you get what do you need to drink what do you want to order can I they're all about making money man help with your clothes what are you looking for that is just how we work here another thing is when you look at the US you're gonna have a big mix of people here there's no one American you know you always have these stereotypes of this or this or this of Americans look Americans come in all shapes all sizes all religions all colors all creeds that's the same as in Ireland all hairnesses because honestly the only fake stuff you see in the US are the artificial colorings like you're gonna see like the Fantas and and the sodas and the cereals you're like wow those colors like glow in the that's dark yes the artificial coloring thing here that's the fakeness of the US the friendliness of the people, that's not fake. They're awesome. So we're in Las Vegas now, and the third thing that's gonna shock you when you come to the US is, 
ID, please. I need some identification, please. The fact that people have to have an ID to buy liquor and buy cigarettes in the U.S. Because in the U.S., you have to be 21 to buy alcohol and 18 to buy cigarettes. And basically, you have to look like you're 40 to actually buy them without them asking for your ID. So make sure you keep your passport with you. So if you're going to buy stuff, you have that. And it's not just you, the person buying, the people with you, they might need an ID, too. All right, we've left the desert of Vegas. I mean, now that's we're just everywhere, right? Here on the coast here in Florida. And the fourth thing that's going to shock you when you come to the U.S. is the price is never actually what you pay in the U.S. Now, in Europe and other countries, you already have this VAT, value-added tax, that's already put into the price. Here in the U.S., we have what we call sales tax, which is added on after you buy the product. So if you go to a McDonald's and you say, oh, I'm gonna get a hamburger on the dollar menu. I've got one buck, I should be able to buy it. No, no, that one buck, then you gotta put the tax on top that of it. Sucks. It can be anywhere from, I don't know, seven to 15%. 15%. Some states have it, some states don't. It can vary oh. between locations. So that $1 cheeseburger or hamburger can actually cost you a dollar ten. It gets really frustrating when you think about it because it's not just sales tax that gets added onto a price. If if you go out to a restaurant, you also have tipping. And tipping in the US is traditionally between 15 and 20% at a sit down restaurant. So think about it. You go to a sit down restaurant, right? So you, you, you got a hundred dollar bill. Okay, I got a hundred dollar bill in my hand and the bill for the for the, the meal is a hundred bucks. I should be fine. Oh no, 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 no. That hundred dollars, well, you gotta add on another 10% because of, well, taxes, right? And the sales tax, and then another 15% on top of that for tipping. So now your hundred dollar bill for a dinner is actually $125. And I know people might not agree with tipping, but that's how it works in the US. They're not paid a great wage, but I they make tipping. a lot more money on tips. And that's why you get this good you service we, you know, we kind of talk about sometimes. That's where that comes from. Now the fifth thing we have that shocks people is when you come here, you know, you think, oh, the U.S. is so developed, they've got all this stuff here, they must have good public transportation. <laughs> good and public transportation in the U.S. do not go together. Yes, there are some cities that have decent public transportations, Chicago, New York. Ireland's public transportation is shite. Boston big cities you probably can get some decent public transportation within the city but a lot of places out there there's either no public transportation or very limited transportation or public transportation that a tourist would not want to ride on I would say that does get kind of frustrating we're like wait you got all this stuff but you know what you gotta drive everywhere anyway the sixth thing is gonna shock you when you come here are the toilets, toilets. and spe specifically the public toilets in the US look I know I talk about toilets a lot on my videos and actually one of our fans made a video of just me saying toilet 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 and all these different places but I'll be honest when you come to the US public toilets are free there's yeah so in Europe guys they're all you have to pay for them like in Ireland you have to pay for like every single toilet because it stops homeless people going into them tons of public toilets and restaurants have them free for everybody but the thing is public toilets in the US are usually kind of gross but what I think is funny is when you look at toilets in the US I get a lot of friends of mine coming from around the world, they're like, oh my god, your toilet has so much water in it. Oh, that's what I thought as well. When I went to Canada, I thought, I thought the toilet was broken in the airport because there was so much water in it. I was like, what the hell is going on? And yes, the U.S. toilets do use a lot of water. Now, they're, they're, they're starting to get the, the, the lower water content toilets, but there are a lot there. So you're kind of like, oh my god, am I supposed to wash my feet in the toilet here? Or do I go to the bathroom in it? It's kind of crazy. Um, and probably another toilet thing that shocks people is when you go to a public place and they have toilets, there's so much space between the doors. Like you can literally look through the crack and see who's in there doing their business, what business they're doing, what book they might be reading, okay? Because you can look through the side of it and then underneath there's like this much of a gap underneath. Damn. So you can see, oh, are their feet there? But literally you can see everything. So those well, We have like transgender toilets where they're all completely cordoned off. Thank God, because I don't want to be looking at some some person take a shit, man. Public toilets really are quite public when you are there. Yes. And it does kind of shock people when you are there. But what is cool is you do have the toilets all over the place. They are free everywhere around the U.S. So that is a really cool thing. So we've moved from the sunny coast of Florida to the sunny coast or banks of the muddy Mississippi River. And the next shock we have for you coming to the U.S. are the Americanisms when you come here. Look. There are things that are typical USA, and part of that is USA, USA. Yes, one of the Americanisms here is the patriotism in the US. You yeah, we don't have like any patriotism in Ireland. If you're trying to be a patriot in Ireland, 
people think that you're part of the part of the IRA, part of some kind of terrorist organization. <laughs> You'll see the flag flying all over the place, and the people they love America, America. You will see that, we and some of the here. kind of quirky things about Americans when you do come here, you will see, and just America in general. You know, I talked about the toilets. Well, one of the things about the toilets is by the toilets you always see this kind of silver box next to it and people are bending over at it You're like what's going on here oh. it's a water fountain okay we like to give away free stuff here in the u.s whether it's free water or free bread at a restaurant or go to a mexican restaurant you have chips and salsas until you vomit and you don't have to pay for it i, I love mean, mexican there's so many americanism little things when you're here with the flag how much we love it you'll have american flag t-shirts heck you can have american flag undies okay you know we joke about oh americans and their fast food well literally oh my god listen Dunkin' Donuts, guys, the greatest place I've ever been in my entire life. Like, nothing even comes close. Oh, I'm actually kind of sad living in Ireland because we don't have Dunkin' Donuts. It's so shit like There is fast food all over the place, and yes, we do have McDonald's everywhere, but we've got more than McDonald's. You've got Culver's in the Midwest. You've got In-N-Out Burger on the West Coast. What a burger in Texas. Shake Shack in New York. Shake and you have Shack. all these fast what food places that? all over the place with their super huge drinks. The, the large holds yeah, one. we have Supermax here in Ireland, and it's shite. One liter, I believe that's what you people call liters, okay? And, oh, and liters, well there's a whole thing right there that Americans don't get. Do you know the only way Americans know the metric system is because of our soda. This is a two liter of Pepsi, this is a two liter of Coke, and you know what? That's how we know liters here. It's by our <laughs> soda sizes. That is something of fact, I would say. <laughs> okay, otherwise we use gallons, we use feet, we gallons. use inches, we use miles. Gallons is four that's, liters. That's, that's how they do it here. And a lot of tourists have a hard time with that when they're trying to figure out, well, well, how much is a gallon? A gallon is about four liters, just so you know, okay? It's like two of these out there. Oh, in the US, how you get great quantity discounts. The, See this Coke? The this was a dollar. See this Pepsi? This was a dollar at Walmart. Love you, Walmart. So and let's cheap. not- My America is so cheap. Forget about the Walmart's out there, 24 hour shopping. Think about it. Yesterday, my son, my oldest son, spilled ketchup all over himself, crashed his skateboard, and ripped up all his clothes, and so he really had nothing left for today. So, guess what I did at 2 o'clock this morning? I went to Walmart and got some co you know, some Coke and Pepsi, and I got him clothes at 2 a.m. And we, yeah, we don't have 24 hour shopping in Ireland. It sucks. We used to have 24 hour Tesco. But someone must have robbed it too many times, and then now it's, we don't have any of that shit like. Love it when we come here, and that's why tourists love it when they come here. Mm. From the friendly people to the 24 hour shopping to the cheap soda. Cheap hey, soda. I know, you can drive those 20 hours from uh, Florida, Illinois, if you have a couple of these with you. Woo <laughs> Go a little crazy. But that's the thing is, what? there are these really fun Americanisms when you do come here. And that's one of the things, all you watching, if you have those funny Americanisms, please put in the comment section below because we're going to make more videos on funny little American things when you are here. But anyway, I guess I'll go into the next uh, kind of shocking thing when you come to the US. And our eighth shocking thing, we're going to go back to that you know metric system that we only understand <laughs> the, the soda. It goes into the driving, okay? Here in the US, People get shocked about the driving, and I know I talked about how there's a lack of public transport and you have to drive when you are here, but when you do drive when you're here, you will be shocked how big the roads are. Dude, they have like eight lanes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We have max two lanes in Ireland. Like you have one lane, and, uh, well, it's one lane actually. One lane and then one lane for overtaking. We only have one lane in Ireland where they have like four or five lanes in Canada, and then in the US, they had like it was just unbelievable. They had like four, like five lanes. It was just like ridiculous, you know? It was just crazy, man. This, I guess there's a lot of people, and also they don't have trains. They don't have trains in the US at all, so. Or how big the cars are. Oh, and also, they're all automatic, okay? If you can find a stick shift, good luck. And yes, you do do miles per hour here. Not. I wouldn't drive a stick shift in, in the US or Canada because it's too much change in the gears. Like, the, the way the roads are set up there, Driving automatic was so easy. I drove for seven hours and like nothing, guys. Like nothing, you know, it was seven or eight hours. It was like nothing. Kilometers per hour, miles per hour. And the speed limits, they change all over the place and you never know when. It's like, oh, it just changed and the cops get you. Oh, there's a shocking thing. You know, some countries, they just have the camera that takes pictures yeah. when you're going too fast. We have that some places in the US, but most of the time you have the cops sitting on the side of the road with their radar guns watching you. Now, oh, you've gone too fast. And the sirens come on and they drive down Damn, and pull sucks. you over. It is quite the 
American experience to be pulled over for speeding, so don't speed when you're here. Here, and there are some other little things that are different. Here in the US, you can take a right turn on a red light. Yes. So if That's amazing. You can turn on right, um, and you can, yeah, you can turn on a red light if it's if there's nobody coming, so it's just amazing. Saves so much time. You're sitting Save there and you can take a right, you got your blinker on, and people are honking at you, it's because they want you to take a right. Yeah. Now make sure you look to make sure no the traffic is coming, but you can take a right on red. And the thing is, we Americans love our cars. I mean, it's the most liberating thing when you're 16 years old, <laughs> 16 years old. Damn, you, that dude packed on some pounds, bro. You can get your driver's license here, <laughs> and so you get your 16 license to drive, license to live. Yeah, we have our license at 18 here. Oh yeah, and that's part of the US culture. We we eat in our cars, we drink in our cars, soda, don't drink and drive, the cops will throw you in jail, they don't care what country you're from, you, from, you will go to jail, don't drink and drive, but you know, drink your liters of Coke and Pepsi. And so the ninth thing that's going to shock you when you come here to the US, oh we're here in Boston, kind of the cool. heart of history of the US and the American Revolution, oh, awesome. and the ninth thing that's going to shock you when you come to the US is, you will see a lot of homogeneity, i.e. that means like everything's kind of very similar everywhere you go, but also you will see definite different cultures and culture and history in the U.S. We get tons of comments saying, oh, the U.S., there's no culture there. It's uh, dude, <laughs> this guy must have been watching my videos. I've said that in like loads of videos. There's no culture there, man. There's, there's internet culture and then sports culture. That's all they do, man, internet and sports. You know, but they make a lot of money from those. So what are the cultures you want? Anyway, it's grand, like it's just McDonald's and there's no history there, it's too young. No, there is history and there is culture here, but on the other side of it, there is a lot of homogeneity. So when you go travel around, you see the same stores. You'll see, oh look, there's an Old Navy, oh look, there's a Sephora, and you'll see the same stores again and again. And it gets kind of repetitive, especially when you're going into the suburbs and kind of the newer cities and newer towns. It really looks like, I mean, I can't tell the difference between going to one city in one part of the country versus another. Another. Yeah, well, in Ireland, like, everywhere looks different, guys. Like, Dublin looks way different than Galway. Galway looks a lot different than Cork. For the most part, you know, obviously all the shops are the same, but the landscape, let's say. When you're doing that shopping experience or hotels and things like that. So it does get kind of shocking when you're like, what town am I in? It seems the same. But having said that, there are distinct cultures and regions here in the US and that does shock people. Because you come here to the Northeast, to New England, you know, they have definite different food. You know, you gotta have the clam chowder and they have the, what they call the, uh, <laughs> the New England Shield where they don't really talk to the people but they're friendly once you get to know them. Or you got the South where they got that Southern hospitality where they feed you for days and give you tons of food and ask you how you're doing and, and all kinds of stuff. Or you got the kind of like the cool kooky West Coast that's out there. There's definitely different cultures here in the US and it does shock people when they drive around and realize yes, a lot of the stuff looks the same, but the people are different in different parts of the country. So just know that yes, this homogeneity will shock you, but there are different cultures out there because yes, there is fantastic history here in Boston and great museums around the US, the, the Getty in LA, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Met in New York. I mean, you can have great history, you can have great art, you can have great culture when you are here because this is a big melting pot of the world. And the 10th thing that's going to shock you when you come to the US are the hotels. Look, you can actually get a good medium priced or even lower priced hotel here in the US. There are tons of hotel chains here. You know, Hampton Inns and Holiday Inns and all. Yeah, you get murdered at the ho Holiday Inns. All these kind of places and it's very <laughs> standardized, okay? If you get a double room, you can probably put four people in there or 40 people in there because the rooms are a lot bigger. When you get two double beds, you get a double room, it'll have two beds i.e. two big beds. There's no two single beds pushed together like in Europe. So you have all this extra space when you are there. Now, one of the things that kind of shocks people when they do, do, the, go do the hotels here in the U.S. is it's kind of like the relatively cheaper the hotel is, the more stuff they give you. You go to a, you know, a cheap chain hotel or a medium priced chain hotel like a Hampton Inn or something like that, and you get free Wi-Fi, you get a free breakfast, like as much breakfast as you want. Um, you know, they're gonna have a pool, all kinds of really cool stuff, no resort fees, oh my God. And then if you go to a, like an expensive, nice hotel, breakfast, oh no, you, you get to pay for that. Oh, you want internet? Oh, that's $19 a day. You're like, what? Oh, the pool? Oh, if you want to use the pool and do the fun stuff, you need to do the resort fees and pay extra. You're like, wait, I'm paying triple the price for a nice hotel and I actually get less amenities when I go there. It kind of boggles well, your mind. The hotels here in Ireland are really nice, but you have to pay a lot for them, I think. I think the hotels here would be definitely a lot more expensive than like anywhere 
in Europe. Sure. So when you come here, just know that you can actually stay in some of these chain hotels and it's not a problem whatsoever, okay? Read the reviews about them, but you know, you know if you get one Holiday Inn Express, it's pretty much the same throughout the country. Remember that homogeneity of number nine? That really does come out in the hotels. But they are clean, they are safe, and there is a lot of price options out there. So just know, if you want a lot of the free stuff, actually you go to the cheaper ones versus the more expensive ones who have better locations and kind of cooler rooms maybe, but make you pay for a lot of things. So it is kind of shocking. Wait, I get less for more or more for less? Yes, I know, the US with our stuff, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> anyway, those are our 10 kind of fun things that might shock tourists. If you want to learn more, check us out on our website. I'm gonna do 10 things that shock tourists in Ireland, actually, that'd be a funny one. I might actually make one of those videos myself. I'm gonna add an 11th to that, guys. In America, there were so many people, like, just kind of an unbelievable amount of people. You know, we went to like the shopping center, which they called like the mall, it was like, the, the national one there was an outrageous amount of people guys like there was hundreds of thousands of people just like standing around and eating and stuff so pretty crazy hope you guys enjoy that man please leave in the comments down below what you think the differences are in your country compared to the u.s i love you all and i'll see you guys in the next one peace